Yo, and welcome to the 70th episode of Lake of Rage, a Pokemon trading card game podcast. I'm your host, as always, Kevin Clementi, a.k.a. Mellow underscore Magikarp. I'm joined today by three very special temporary guest hosts because we have a very special episode for you all today. Now, you may have noticed uh, it's kind of an awkward in-between. We didn't have an episode last week, but it's still last week this week because I'm going to be in Worlds for uh, I'm going to be in London for Worlds. And because of that, we're not going to have an episode. So we're kind of doing an in-between Hey, this is going to cover both weeks awkwardly here. So hopefully if you're traveling to Worlds or the London Open, it gives you something to listen to. And if you're not, you still got some good content there for you. We're going to be doing a Worlds draft slash predictions here. And joining me for this is Grant, a.k.a. Boo CK. Yo, yo. Zach, a.k.a. Senior Doom. How's it going? And Locke, a.k.a. Dull Locke. Yo, what's up? I'm also playing in a tournament right now, and I got winning in. <laughs> Let's go, Lock. <laughs> so we got a very special episode for y'all today. We're recording live on twitch.tv slash mellow underscore Magikarp for the first time in about three months, which is also super cool. We're going to be going through our world's draft. Now, unlike other drafts where they just pick players, we're going to rotate between one round of picking players and then two rounds of picking specific predictions don't worry you'll be able to follow along very 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 easily because it's not super hard and i will be tweeting out the draft at the end as well so you'll be able to see everything if you so desire we've already randomized the order the order now look it seems like i'm scamming everyone because i am but i did it live they all saw it happen i'm going to be drafting first who is going to be drafting second Doom is going to be drafting third, and Locke is going to be drafting fourth, and it is a snake draft. So then we will go backwards, Locke, Doom, Boo, me. I will go ahead and start us off with the very first pick. This will be a round of players. And the first overall pick, the winner of the Pokemon World Championships, is going to be Tord Reklev. Okay, going with Chalk. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) a great pick (laughs) all right boo you're up oh this is tough now obviously the one one without a doubt uh toward it's his time but there are a lot of great options on the board available um and a lot of good players playing well too that's what makes it tough is you want somebody who's who's hot and has had a good season um have you seen that beard towards pretty hot yeah well (laughs) no leaks (laughs) (laughs) I I think I'm going to stick in the United States. Um you know, uh uh KDR member and NAIC champion Azul GG. I thought you were going to go me for a second. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want somebody playing on day 2. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, Doom, you are up. So, you know, like, like, book, I'm having the issue. Like, there's a lot of good players out there. You know, what, who, who do I go to? And I've got to go with the best represent, representative of Doom. That is going to be Gustavo Wada, champion of Doom. He's won, won my tournament, and I, I got to take him number one. He's proven to me over and over that he can take it all. Great pick. Also, junior world champion, I believe, or was it seniors? Junior. junior junior okay so he's he's been there before all right lock you're up all right i'm also going chalk uh so this person probably helped me the most with his list so i'm going with stevon ivanoff <laughs> Ooh, let's go great pick great pick stevon ivanoff so now, going down into the next round, Locke will be leading us off, but this round is not going to be players. This deck is going to be which deck will win the Pokemon World Championship. So Locke starts us off. What is the winning deck? And of course, you cannot pick a deck that has already been picked, if anyone was unaware. I'm also going Chalk again. I'm going Arc Intel. Okay. Arc Intel. Doom, what about you? Do you, you? Wanna, do, do oh, you yeah, want to talk I'm, about your pick? Yeah, go for it. Lock. Oh, I don't know. It's Arceus won most of the tournaments around, and you know it hasn't won with Inteleon. It is only one with like the supporter engine or the B barrel engine. So I think Intel's due for one, you know. So I'm, that's where I'm going with it. 
I hate okay. I hate to top up, talk up Locke's pick, but we are a Pokemon trading card game podcast. People want the content too. Arc Intel is the deck that all the top players look at and are like, yeah, it exists, but there's Palkia, there's other stuff. And then it just shows up, it wins worlds, and literally everyone's like, yeah, I probably should have just played that because it's clearly that good. Well, it comes with so many tools as well. You know, like the Intel being able to get anything is great, but Arceus is such a broken card. Um, and it comes with the colorless package with Sharon, with Dunspars. Um, and then you put the water package in, you get Melanie. Uh, it just has all the tools, and that's kind of what you want, right? You want to have options for all the matchups you're going to face. Yeah, it is it is the most tool box. It's, it's so good. <laughs> I'm upset how good it is. I said before on, on stream, maybe on the podcast, it's my safe pick if I panic at the last minute. It's so good. All right, Doom, it's just, you're up. Since I can't pick Arc Intel, I'm going to go Palkia Ice Rider. Um, Palkia, Palkia Ice Rider can it can be Arc Intel. The Ice Rider will hit the numbers it needs to, and having that one hit KO ability and being able to just continue to do so is kind of actually really good for this meta, considering that you know Arc Intel heals, and then you can get the occasional deck like Stone Journeys for some reason seeing a little resurgence on the online meta. Maybe people are like testing that water, seeing, hey, maybe I want to bring that. I don't think it would do good, but someone could still show up and <laughs> still show up and be a, be a nuisance. So having that one hit that one hit capability is is going to be massive. I would expect more than zero stone journers or like zero stall decks. And Ice Rider's best thing is, like you said, it beats shenanigans very effectively. And that's good. Now, are you expecting Inteleon or B-Barrel to win? Inteleon. The, the B-Barrel is too random, and the Inteleon engine with it allows you to go, you grab your Melanies you need to continue on, or your Leon you might need for a KO, or even the double quick shooting version that, that I like to use, where it's okay, now I've got, I've got extra 40 damage every turn, so maybe I don't need to discard energy this turn. I could use Ride of the High King and get a KO, you know? So... That that version to me is the, the superior version. Will it still exist after rotation? Yeah, because the B barrel engine version will still be out there, but the Inteleon to me is better. That checks out. Especially the built in mill tank answers are always the one to me that's just like it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no shenanigans. We're gonna have answers. All right, Boo, you're up. All right. I'm glad this uh fell to me. Um I was I was hoping I, I knew Doom in front of me that he was likely leaning that way and, and Locke would go chalk. So um <laughs> I played I played Arceus uh at every regional I went to and, and I see this year. So it feels um rough going against this pick as a as a pet deck throughout the entire season, but there was a second deck I brought with me to to every event. Um and I think it's really strong and well positioned right now. And I'm going with Mew. What? Mm hmm. <laughs> Again, it's got answers, it's got power. I think uh, Path isn't as prevalent as you'd think it would be. Um, I think there's ways to spice it up. Obviously, you can go more flips uh, with catchers, you can go um, a Donk style and go fast, go second. I think we're, we're doing it now. I think it's uh, Mew's time. I unfortunately can't disagree. Mew is Mew is Mew. Everyone in the world yeah. has been turned to Pokemon Catcher Meloetta O code. And uh it's a lot to come back from. <laughs> yeah, it was a tough, tough uh opening to my EUIC. I believe it was um up against James Cox, I believe. And uh I come all the way to Germany just to get <laughs> Mel <laughs> Meloetta donked and uh to start things off. So that was fun. Now, I am going to select my deck that I'm unsure why you all didn't pick it. It is the clear BDIF. It is the deck that I am very certain. Here's my other bold prediction. The Brazilian crew, WADA. The Limitless crew and Bradner's crew are all going to bring Palkia and Teleon. Oh, I know it's yeah. incredibly obvious. I know it is. It is a thing, but my gut says the best players are going to bring it. Therefore, it is going to win the Pokemon World Championships. 
Easy dub. GG's. Well played. Yeah, great pick. Especially yeah, with, strong. Well, I was going to say, I know that my player is probably playing it, but I guess, Boo, your player is also probably playing your deck. So that checks out. Yeah, that, that should be a poll question. <laughs> the other day, which, which player is more likely to, to play this deck? And um, I think Boo <laughs> sent a cryptic tweet the other day hinting Mew's still pretty good. So. <laughs> And he's not someone and I, to and I believe manipulate. It. Yeah, no, yeah. He he tells you straight. He's pretty straightforward. The next round, we are going to do the region with most players in top cut. So there are five regions in the Pokemon trading card game. Essentially, there's five regions. There's North America, Latin America, Europe, Oceania, and Japan. Japan being its own region run by TPC, not TPCI. The other four regions run by TPCI. So those are the five choices that we will have to pick from. I am going first because we are snaking back around. I am going to go with Japan. And the reason I'm going to pick Japan is because I think there are a lot of very, very good players. They have a very large amount of day two invites. And most importantly, they have just been playing the Pokemon trading card game all of Pandemic. They have been grinding online tournaments so, so, so much. You see some of the best players in the game. I am expecting a couple of Japanese players to show up, probably running Palkia and Teleon, or some completely random janky Mew list that high rolls into it. I think Japan is going to have the most players in top cut. Also, as a reminder, if anyone was unaware, it is an asymmetrical top cut. So top eight, maybe, but there could be more. All right, Boo, you're up. Yeah, that was a great pick. Um, we Because we don't really know what's going to come from them because they're always a set or two ahead. Um, and they've, they've been playing with these cards a lot longer. But there's a lot of uh, frequency with with two picks left on the board here, um, big high numbers of automatic day twos. So the chances are good. It's which way will I go? Hmm. Well, I've got Azul and I obviously love America. <laughs> <laughs> That's very uh, obvious. Yeah. I've, I, I have been to Europe this season for UIC and got to meet a lot of Europeans as well when they came to NAIC and, uh, you know, people you, you've, seen on the internet or watch play on stream before and so it's really cool and they have a lot of great players but i think i gotta go stars and stripes i gotta go north america and canada and and yeah and you get and you get the benefit of the canadians which have has some good players as well yeah some of them are on band now so you could be good <laughs> right oh. <laughs> and, and did well with mew <laughs> that's true you're just you're stacking your draft oh my goodness <laughs> right. but believe believe in your picks right all right, Doom, you're up. I have got to go with the hive mind we call Australia or Oceania, or wherever you want to put them all together. That Australian continent is going to carry. They just get together, they put that hive mind together, they're all going to carry on into day two together, and then whatever strategy beats them finally gets them, but they'll, they'll still get a couple into Top Cut. That's one of the yep. ones that I was expecting, like, oh, they're the smallest numbers. Maybe that will fall to lock or none of us will draft them. But like you said, the hive mind is terrifying. Yeah, you got to think that they put their mind together. And if they do the same sort of thing where they play the same deck or, or versions of the same deck, one or two is going to break through. And if you get two in top eight, that's a great percentage. And it's not unrealistic. If they have the spice... They are all bringing it together, and that is untrue of every other region. Right. Right. I mean, look at the results. It's what, eight Palkias in top eight, or eight Mews, or eight, let's say, Solrocks for some reason now? <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Gigas. Bro, y'all are leaking. All right, Locke, you're up. You got two regions to pick from, but they are oh. both some of the best players in the world. Yeah, I just, I just gotta go with... Uh... The obvious with the EU. <laughs> yeah, that's <Okay. laughs> you picked Stefan. Yep. It's in London. So like statistically, yeah. I think there's the most players are probably gonna be from EU. Yeah, that's that's a value pick right there. Home field advantage. Right? They're not gonna be jet lagged, like, ooh, I'm not looking forward to uh that time difference. Yeah, what time of day do you get in? 
Uh, I get in Tuesday at like 3 p.m. And I'm just going to stay up. And I have one day to fix my sleep schedule, <laughs> or else we're playing Arcus or Aladon. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> Good deck. I could see a lot of the Japanese players bring that. It's actually really big in Japan, which is super interesting. Yeah. Their meta also is really, very different. They also seem to like Regigigas a lot, too. And Blissey. And, they are, and Blissey. Yeah, their their meta is it's something. It, it's been interesting with like running, running my late night stuff because I get a lot of Japanese players in and they do bring these other weird meta decks and they have been absolutely winning. That's why I picked it as my region. I, I believe in them unless I'm playing against them and I'm going to beat them. But, you know, have you been secretly testing with them? I wish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of testing with people, we have the next round of players. So, Locke, you get to pick first for us. Which player are you going to pick for your draft? All right. Pre-pandemic, I would say my region was of NA was one of the strongest. So I'm going with one of my homies, and I'm going with Bradner. Great pick. I you spell Isaiah? I-S-A-I-A-H. A lot of vowels. <laughs> as, as I figure out how to spell it, uh, I think that's a really good pick. I think out of every player at the Pokemon World Championship, I'm pretty sure Isaiah will have played the most games of anyone. And most importantly, all of them with Palkia. <laughs> Doom, you're up. So I'm going to say within my region I, I did pick, I'm going to go with Henry Brand. Their former world champion. Current world champion. Or yeah, that's Current true. Yeah. The yeah. longest reigning world champion at that. He's gonna come in with his hive mind and he's gonna utilize their powers and get all the way to the finals and then hopefully repeat. Book, you're up. Okay, I'm also going to well take a slightly different approach than than Doom and Locke. Uh I'm going to stay within my theme. And I think this player is just a cold-hearted killer, um, a Players' Cup champion, and a Mew player came on this podcast, said what they're playing, did it, and won. I'm going Natalie Miller. It's hard to root against her. That's impossible to root against her. It's hard to bet against her. Yeah. Just cold-hearted part of that hive mind. Uh, going to come out swinging, and I fully believe. For my pick, I'm going to pick someone that... I'm going to throw all the shade at every other draft in the world. Because I have seen multiple drafts completely ignore this player. And when I say the name, everyone's going to be like, yeah, of course. And that is former world champion... And last year's runner-up, Shintaro Ito. Uh, he's good. He's very good. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. plays a lot. <laughs> he is a YouTuber slash streamer. And he plays in the online tournaments. His I'm pretty sure it's little brother. Also does very well. I He's good. <laughs> like He's very good. And I think he is a great pick this late in the draft. Yeah, that's a great pick. The next question that we are going to predict on is which engine will win Worlds? Now, when I say engine, for anyone who's unaware, we are talking about Inteleon, B-Barrel, the Snorlax engine. Maybe you could say like supporters or Poke Gear if you prefer. There's others that you could come up with. Genesect as an engine, you know, anything like that. And I am going to be incredibly boring and say the Inteleon engine is winning Worlds. It hasn't Juan, did it win an IC? Wait, what won EUIC? I'm uh, I'm forgetting. <laughs> it, was, it was water, right? So yeah, okay, the Intellion win engine won and UIC. It's gonna win worlds. Didn't win NAIC, that's okay. It's too good. It's too good to bet against. Yeah, it's yeah. clearly the chalk pick. Um there's no way around it. The crowd uh, is currently booing me for the pick also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, that's that's rough. Yeah, I mean, obviously you you have to take it because again, like a frequency type deal, it's going to be probably the most played, and it's just so strong, right? All right, Grant, you're up. Oh, now this is interesting, right? You bet with I your can... pick or against your pick, <laughs> right? I, I think it's time to hedge against it. Um. But I do think there are other really Ooh. strong engines out there. The Sorok engine. The Shadow Rider engine. That's now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out to H2. Is Radiant an engine? Um also and I, I have a question here we can we can talk about is a is a mix between the both as we've seen before in Salt Lake City. Uh is that an engine? Do you think it would be both like B barrel and Inteleon? Yeah. I would say that's a viable choice. You think they're both be in the deck. Does there anyone disagree? Yeah. Is, that's fine. is straight Arceus an engine? So I would like, say that's so like like Dural would be a support. I would say that, yeah, uh, the supporter eight supporter engine. engine. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to stick with consistency. And I, I, I guess I go all in, right? <laughs> and I'll just go. <laughs> I, I hate to do it for my, for my little beaver guy who's been, who's been my right hand man <laughs> all season. Uh, it just got the promo arts too. Um, but I'll, I'll go Fusion Strike Engine. The Fusion Strike system. <laughs> One of the most broken abilities ever printed. It's so good. <laughs> way too, way too good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, there's nothing else to say. It turns out drawing until you have six four times in a turn is really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doom, you're up. I have to. I have to go with the Ibarrel engine. It it surprised me. I did talk it down a little bit earlier, saying like the Intellion is a little a little bit stronger, a little bit the safer pick, but it has won. It did win NAI, NAIC. It helped uh, Frank per Perchick with the Whimsicott engine or Whimsicott deck get you know second second over in Europe, and it's just enough of a wild card that it could come through and get maybe get you what you need, or you can draw out of like stuff like Roxanne. So it's like you know Roxanne might actually see play and prevent being just stuck with bad hands. Yeah. Or, it's so good. Like you can Marnie yourself and have draw outs, you know, with quick ball, ultra ball, you're always going to see more cards. It's just so strong. I think that's well, the, the best part of the engine. You play four quick balls and four ultra balls. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, at the same time, you can end up with five dead cards and no way to get rid of them. And then now you're okay. Now, now you're entirely stuck, <laughs> but, but that's the risk you run. That's where there's a little bit more wild card over the Inteleon engine. All right, Locke, you're up. Oh, well, you know, there is an obvious pick of the turbo engine. Yep. But I, I'm actually going off the cuff here. Uh, so in this side tournament that I'm playing while, while I'm off stream, I actually did win my winning in against Ice Rider and Teleon. That's and I'm ahead. playing Arc Zard. And with just the chart V VMAX. And I'm just going with what I'm playing, and that's the eight supporter engine, draw supporter engine, like the like the Arthur Aldon type thing. Like just eight draw supporters. Yep. No, I know exactly what you're saying. It is the thing that literally no other decks play, unless <laughs> that's all you're doing. Four Marnies, four research, or maybe it's like four research, two Marnies, two Averys, or some shenanigans like that. Paired with usually Arceus, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, of course. Arceus, good. Arceus, right. really good. I would say the turbo engine, it was, was going to be my backup pick, though. So I'm surprised no one else picked it, though. <laughs> yeah, the turbo engine is... I think the problem with the turbo engine is every time you play it or you play against it or something, they have to fill their bench. And then if you go second against Palkia as the turbo engine, you uh, lose. <laughs> that is that's the biggest downfall for sure all right we have a bit of a i'm gonna say meme question but it's worth just as many points as the others 
<laughs> number of copies of crushing hammer in top cut lock you get either the best or the worst place to be you go first how many copies of crushing hammer will be in top cut of this world championship you know i was gonna put down a number but if i'm picking first i might as well just go with zero now <laughs> yeah i respect that choice completely <laughs> All right, Doom. Can't pick zero. So, so since I'm going second and I can't pick zero, are we talking like deck deck numbers or are we talking total, total numbers? Total numbers. Yeah, so if one deck plays four, there would be a, four. A maximum of 32. 32. Well, technically, there could be more, right? <laughs> Actually, no, you it's don't have to cut. Yeah. It could be. A, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just say 64. We'll just say every deck has it. I can't I'm tell just if you're going to go down it, 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 it wouldn't be. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. just going to meme it. If I can't get say zero, I'm going to go all in and just say Crushing Hammer is the MVP of worlds. There's going to yep. be. <laughs> what is. How many decks is that even in top cut? <laughs> wait, wait. I think the max would actually have to be 60, 60 total because uh, if there's. Would they just cut, cut the top eight if uh, it was 16? Oh, okay, you know what? Let's, let's, if we're going to full out meme it and it's an asymmetrical top cut, can we make it 69? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, if is we're your, it is your pick. pick. <laughs> yeah, if we're, going closest to, if we're going closest to a number, yeah. All right, so that leaves two options yeah. for me uh, to get close. There's, than... there's a lot of numbers between <laughs> 0 and 69. <laughs> <laughs> um, since I don't want to do pick one and get and block out lock here which is actually zero is probably the best pick obviously <laughs> um i'll go four i'll say one yeah. deck i'll try and hit it on on the number that was gonna be my pick so i'm gonna go with uh eight i'm gonna say there's two controls in there or something like okay. that that's smart yeah i think four is the actual correct answer i'm pretty sure there's gonna be one form of control with some amount of energy denial in it but I think I think eight's the next best number. All right, we are coming back around. This is the last round of players, and then we have two more other questions coming in. I'm snaking back through. I th think I'm gonna stick with Japan on this one, Ooh. and I'm gonna pick Dakoya Yoneda. Okay, huh? and I think the best reason for this is. He is the reason Japan plays Capture Energy in Palkia. And I think he is just the Palkia master at this point. It's either him or Bradner. One of those two is definitely just half Palkia at this point. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hedge my bets. I'm going to go all in on Japan making top cut. I'm going to pick Yoneda. Good pick. Staying with your theme. Love it. I think this will be the first time I deviate from mine. I was thinking you were going to go with this pick. Uh, friend of the program. Myself? Pedro Torres. Oh. <laughs> I guess that's a better he's, pick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he stopped streaming, and I know he's been focusing on the game. Um, I, think, I think this might be another great performance from him at Worlds. I think that's a great pick. All right, Doom, you're up. All right, well... This is the this is the kiss ass pick, but I'm gonna have to select one Kevin Clemente. <laughs> oh, what a throw! <laughs> throwing, no. But I, I I need you on stream so I can get banned from the main channel for spamming your emotes. Are you actually That's selecting true. me? I am actually selecting you. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I had my two serious picks, and then I was throwing out my meme pick and. You're my meme pick because nobody else like you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Locke, how are you possibly going to top that selection? Oh. Uh, you know, there's... The two choices in my mind are either Robin or Sander, so I think I would just go with Sander. <laughs> Sander was my more serious pick, to be honest, so... <laughs> Yeah, he's after watching the NAIC creation and just knowing how much control shenanigans exists, I am terrified of whatever he comes up with. 
Like there's there's so much with Eldegoss loops. There's so much with just Mill Tank existing. Yeah, there's there there's a lot. That's a really good pick. Yeah, he's got he's got enough uh, tools in the toolbox to put together something impressive here. Uh, and let's not take anything away from the rest of the group. Mies, um, obviously, as he said, <laughs> uh, came up with the sort of idea for the Mewtwo V Union. But, um, you know, Sander is known as the control guy. And I think I picked him for, I think it was EUIC on the pod. You did. Uh, I think he's just a, a super strong player. And, and it was great to see him top four at NAIC. And this might be his time. Yeah, Mies is one of those players I do not want to run into on day one. I think he's one of the best players in day one. And them working together is uh, terrifying. <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, extremely. All right, Locke. Our next question for our prediction is number of copies of Marnie in Top Cut. All right. So unlike Boo, I, I'm a hedger. Since I have EU as my region, I'm going to go pretty high on my Marnie counts just because of all the NA players. And I'm going to go with 18. 18 copies of Marnie in Top Cut. All right, Doom. What about um, you? I'm actually my number I came up with was 16. I think we'll have plenty of decks at least playing like one to two, maybe one with four. Just enough, just enough disruption, but not enough where it's like the major, major card in the deck. It just doesn't feel like Marnie is seeing a lot of four of play anymore, but still seeing like one to two. Yeah, it's like a really odd one where you're like, oh, Ark Intel plays like two of them, right? And then oh, Palkia might play one. And so the number is, this is a hard question. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the point. They can't all be as easy as picking me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Grant, you're up. All right. I, yeah, I've tried to crunch some numbers here, uh, run through a, a million simulations. Um, my number's a little bit lower than Doom and Locke. Uh, and I'm between two numbers here. Um, I'm gonna go with six. I think maybe a four of, and then two one ofs. I think that's about where I'm I'm getting to. So I'm gonna talk through my thoughts because, despite making the question, I don't actually put zero thought into it. So I'm gonna put thought into it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so talk it out. This is a podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna say there's ten people in Top Cut. I uh, I think that's what's gonna end up happening. Of those 10, there's going to be a Mew. There's zero Marnies in Mew. There's going to be a Palkia with a Marnie, so that's one. A Palkia without a Marnie, so that's zero. There's going to be some Arc Intel. I'm going to say that's four more, so we're up to five. There's going to be a Control. Now, Grant Manley has been playing his Control list with a Marnie in it, which I think is quite smart. But I think in the end, it's not going to make it there, no matter who plays it. So there's going to be nothing in there. And then we're going to see something that only plays draw supports. I really like Locke's pick of which engine wins worlds, something with either B-Barrel or just something with like four Marnies. So we're going to end up with nine there, and then I'm going to add one to it because there's multiple decks that I haven't even accounted for currently. So I'm going to say 10 copies of Marnie in top Good number. Cut. One deck that's got four, and then just a couple of one-ofs or two-ofs here and there, and then a bunch of zeros. Your hands off the chess piece, but wouldn't you want to take eleven, right, to to split me in doom? But that's fine. Dude. Hands off the chess piece. <laughs> You're locked in at ten. Yeah, yep. You're locked. No more. Yep. <laughs> Too late. All right. I am leading us off for the last question, which will be the highest placement for a single polarized deck. So we're gonna go with the actual number here for the highest placement for a purely single prize deck. So a Lunar Rock, a Regis, uh, could be a Radiant Charizard, just kind of on its own. I'm trying to think of what other single prize decks even exist. I mean, can you have the one of V in it? Yeah, one of V or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah one Throw of V. Yeah, one of V. Yeah, because yeah. you know. yeah, I, 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 I've seen the fish engine in a lot of uh, one off yeah. single prizes now. Yeah we'll, yeah, we'll we'll say a one of random V is fine, or even an attacking V is fine, but like 
No, no more than that. If you have like a Zapdos and a Moltres and a Raikou, you're not a single prize deck, even if you have Zard and Mol Baby Moltres and etc. Okay. All right. I am going to say the highest placing single prize deck is going to be... Do you want a specific number or is top four fine? Go specific number. We'll go fourth. Fourth place. Okay. Wow. That is... Um... That's one of the ones that plays zero Marnies. That is a lot higher than I would think. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of good ones. I think Radiance Art um, is nuts. Like, I actually think Radiance Art is very nuts. I do too, and I'm sort of in. I'm in the middle ground of eight to sixteen in that range. Um, got got to pick I'll a go, number. I'll go nine. <laughs> nine. I'll go nine. Yeah, I'll I'll do the bubble uh asymmetrical cut potential person or missing out on a clean cut all right doom what do you say the highest placing single prize deck i'm actually placing about 16th like it just has enough to get there and either it's luck runs out or it gets the absolute worst matchup like sander shows up and knows how to absolutely destroy their one prize deck and that's as far as they'll, they'll go it just feels like that with single prizes like they can get to the get nearly get to the cut and then they just don't have enough to push themselves over i don't know i think sander's deck is going to lose to lunar rock so it depends what single prize deck he is. <laughs> boy that would be a surprise <laughs> Luna Rock world champion. Huh, that's new. I mean, we all knew it was coming. Yeah, we just yeah. none of us wanted to say it. Right. Is that or Reggie? Which one's going to take it down? I no means. I do think Reggie Reggie has to get a little hot and people have to just like not have certain cards in their deck. But I don't hate the concept of Reggie. I'm with you. It just feels yeah. like I, I feel like it's going to be a Japanese player who's going to bring Reggie. And knowing knowing how much they've played it and having that extra extra like practice with it that they've had, they'll be able to take it pretty far. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I see happening, right? Just like someone who has been secretly a Reggie main, they draw a little hot, they just happen to have what they need. I, I could see Reggie doing well. I can also see a lot of angry tweets by people who thought Reggie was the broken play who go 0-3 draw. But <laughs> not, Reggie's not a safe pick, but I can see it doing well. All right, Locke, you're up. What is the highest placing single prize deck? All right, I'm going with the storyline here. Uh, I would say there's 11 for asymmetrical cut. Uh -huh. And this person gets in magically at 11th. Then they put him on stream because they the crowd wants... And Twitch chat and YouTube chat want want this uh, Reggie Rock on stream, and then, and then <laughs> they lose on stream to the to chat's dismay and go eleventh. I think that is a very realistic storyline. <laughs> actually, yeah. the are they putting all the lists on or all the cuts on stream? I believe so. The right, schedule works out. Yeah. Yeah, they've uh, on YouTube. They've already actually scheduled out all the streams. Like you can actually go and uh, set yourself up with reminders and stuff already. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah for anyone who is not the, going to the Worlds or the Open, uh, it's going to be an amazing set of streams. Like Thursday for day one, Friday for day two, but most importantly, every round of Saturday. It sounds like it's going to be back to back to back action, right? Because you're not going to have to sit there and wait for anything. Yeah, it's unfortunate the the time difference for us, but. You know, this is a global event, so it, everyone's got to deal with it. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, I mean, y'all can watch it later. <laughs> It'll be fine. The downside <laughs> no, is, no, no. for those of us on the West Coast of the U.S. like myself, I'll obviously be in London, but uh, finals for Masters starts at like 4 a.m. my time, yeah. I think it is, because it's like 11 a.m. <laughs> in London. Yeah, so it's not the best there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was part of the best part of uh, having an EU regional right before an NA, it's like, I could change my deck. I'm seeing, I get to see two or three rounds before I need to make a decision here. What's what's hot? <laughs> what's hot in Europe right now? But yeah, uh, make sure to tune into Worlds. Or do you have any other last second thoughts on the Pokemon World Championships, predictions, anything like that before we call the pod? 
I've got honorable mention of an, an engine, um, the Cinchino engine we didn't talk about. Um, we said Philip Schultz's name earlier. He did win a regional with it. I think we could see somebody messing around with that. Um, it's still super strong drawing cards. I would be cool. I think there's going to be literally zero copies of Cinchino in day two. But I would welcome something like that doing well yeah absolutely it it feels like next format like we're going to start getting into that trade thing with uh the new um gardevoir engine so like seeing an early preview of that with the chinchino might be just might be nice to get people kind of prepped for that yeah i mean i'm so excited for rotation for uh just for the inteleon to leave and to see you know the leapard um it's literally Bibberal. just Lipard, Bibberal, and yeah, supporters. Just, oh, <laughs> right. Other other things messing around with. Uh, just get Inteleon out of here. And this world is going to be so interesting because it's the format seems like it's been essentially the same, right? The the yeah. two things have been, you know, it was Arceus one half and then Palkia came in. Um, obviously, the the last thing that really affects anything is is the Charizard. But we also have Blastoise. And we could see some some ping shenanigans, some yoga loops. Uh, but other than that, you know, Pokestop maybe in something. But mostly, we've it feels like we've been playing the same format for, what, six months? Five months? It's also come back around so much. When I first started testing for Worlds, it seemed like, all right, I don't have to worry about Blissey Mill Tank. I don't have to worry about Mew. I don't have to worry about this. And now that we're coming back into Worlds, it's like, people are hyping up Blissey Mill Tank again. Mew is a very yeah. good play into day one of Worlds now. Like, suddenly, we're just back where we were two months ago, where it felt like we completely moved around. Yeah, it, I, it, this whole meta has felt like all we've done is just thrown another deck on the pile and everything's there. It's not, it's, you just don't come in. It's going to be, oh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of Buzzwall and Zoroarks and maybe a Malamar deck like we were like a couple years ago. It's like, okay, there's like nine decks I, I actually have to prep for. Yeah, I think that's probably that's the only good thing, I guess. I mean, even like Shadow Rider, something like that. You know, things that were a thing for a little bit, but now we actually have a full collective of decks, and we complain about it every time. You know, a new set comes out, and that is the automatic counter to the last BDIF. And now it's like, well, we we've, we've completed the circle, and we get to see what everyone can do with them. And do you guys think anything new will come out of this? Like anything spicy, other than like a one or two card tech? To, you know, like when. You know, Bradner did three sobbles. Like, oh wow, totally new deck. Well, not really. But, <laughs> you know, it's it's still the same deck. It's just how you you know how do you refine it? Do you think anything new and spicy will come out? I don't think for those of us that pay very close attention to the meta and online tournaments, I don't think so. I think there might be like a Radiant Charizard box that does very well, or like some liminal deck that does very well, and that would be the ooh spicy. But for those of us who have been playing a lot and paying attention to the meta, no. I don't think so. No. The, right. It feels like we have enough. If anything comes in, it'll just be a simple tech, like maybe an extra thing, one of this, but I don't think we'll see a whole new deck outside. Maybe something Sander comes up with a control, which will just be, you know, just another extension of what he's already been working on. Um, show up. Yeah. Like, well, like going the only to- surprising one would be like Arc plus a brand new big VMAX. That's about it. That would be exciting. Yeah. I'm in, bro. Arceus Copperage of Emacs. Bring it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or, I mean, I was... or someone finally cracked uh, Dialga V Star and it actually made it consistent enough that it doesn't trip like every five games. That is something we haven't talked about. Yeah. Is, is Dialga a thing? Someone's going to bring it. Yes. I'm seeing a lot of I people. I think Dialga is very good. It makes me think it isn't. No, I think someone's going to figure out Dialga. I think Dialga is very good. Whether it's going to win worlds, I obviously don't think so. I think Palkia. But I do think it is a. I think it's a very good deck. Yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah. I think Dialga is very good. Like the card is just so nuts. I mean, yeah, taking two turns and doing a ton of damage. But I think that the game plan, everyone knows the game plan against it, right? Yeah. And that's the other big, like, you know what it's going to do, 
And some decks will naturally have answers, like the random Radiant Charizard that can Oko stuff, or you should be playing an Arc Intel Choice Belt plus Goon, so if you're able to go first against it and like pick off whichever one they put energy on or something like that. Right. Yeah, so there, there's their weaknesses to the deck, but I think it's very good. The card is very good. Yep. Yeah, I'm just thinking, like, going back through, there was always, you know, every third or fourth tournament, a wrinkle to the things we've seen, you know, um, even going to the Lucario V-Star, but the turbo engine, uh, we said it before, I just said it, the Cinchino engine with Philip Schultz, um, the full energy denial, you know, we've seen the turbo again, like I said, like every three or four tournaments, something new's come out, and the last two that we saw, we pretty much knew uh, NAIC in Milwaukee, you know, were pretty vanilla-ish uh, North American style tournaments. Arceus winning, uh, Duraludon, I guess. But um, I, I'm just interested to see if somebody puts two things together that we haven't seen, and that comes up with something sort of new and and interesting. And I think maybe Locke's right with the a, a V Star partner that that hasn't been played. Kind of, you know, everyone goes through their binder and and sees what. Uh, potentially has some power all right so the pokemon world championships is in uh at the time of recording what six days until that's day two five days oh my goodness five days yeah, so five soon days. yeah five days. yeah so hopefully everyone tunes in we'll find out who actually wins this boo where can the people find you if they want more of you at real boo ck i should be up watching and hopefully tweeting along a little bit um yeah on twitter so check me out doom where can the people find you uh you can find me on twitch at senior underscore doom uh twitter at senior underscore doom and i'm lim- play.limitless.com running the um <clears throat> tournament of doom every friday at 7 30 uh p.m pacific time so if you play in one by the time you're done it will be worlds <laughs> let's go <laughs> <laughs> lock where can the people find you all right on twitch is the lock with an underscore uh on twitter it's still the lock with an underscore but with a zero instead of the O. and i might be doing a uh i might do a watch party for the uh world stream depending on if i want to wake up on time or not <laughs> <laughs> that's a big ask yeah <laughs> Myself, you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at Mellow underscore Magikarp. Uh, Come up and say hi to me, if you so desire, at Worlds. Just let me know, like, your name, and if you know me from Twitch or the YouTube comment section, let me know your Twitch username or YouTube username so I actually know who you are. And this has been another episode of the Lake of Rage podcast. We will catch you all in two weeks.